YouTube. What's good? Today we're going to be learning the any% percent no CE route for Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. This route specifically will be going over the newest iteration of the route which is called Fishy Skip and in this Fishy Skip route specifically we will be skipping all of the levels known as Fishy and we will be skipping the Green Ghost boss fight implementing GGS as well in this run. Now for this route you can either implement GGS or no GGS but for this run in particular we're going to be going over the GGS route for this as in general the community think that GGS is accessible to newer runners and you don't necessarily need to learn the no ggs route unless you just really do not like ggs this tutorial is meant to be a quick tutorial meaning that i'm going to be speeding up some parts of this run and only going to be slowing down to show specific tips tricks and skips in order to complete this run that being said this video will not cover every single minute detail of the run and if you have any further questions please drop them down in the comments below or you can go to the src page for we do not have 100 frights and join the discord and drop any questions you have there i'm sure the community would be more than happy to help you out before we continue 45 percent of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to me so if you like the content please subscribe and please like the video it helps out a lot now let's get into it now real quick we're going to go over the controls for the game so first you will always be holding down the r button when you're running around this game at all this is because this is the run button and basically just makes scooby move faster and you're only going to release this button when i specifically tell you to a button to jump b button to dash x button to interact with anything warp gates doors etc and then you can also press the b button in the air to execute a move called the super smash or think of it like a ground pound from super mario now an important tip about movement in this game is that you will always be rolling the control stick this means that if you're going to the right and you want to go immediately to the left you would not just simply go from right to left you go right and then roll up to the left or you go right and roll down to the left and so if you're moving scooby you always want to be rolling the control stick because if you just go from right to left scooby will kind of just skew off and not go the direction that you want and so you always want to be rolling the control stick wherever you want scooby to go we're also going to be going for and executing frame perfects throughout this run this means buttons or enemies you can essentially run into them and stop the bonking animation from happening by hitting them frame perfectly this saves about a second every time you do it which can add up to a ton of time saves throughout the run and to execute this trick all you need to do is release the b button as you run into a button or an enemy same frame that you run into them and then what you'll normally do afterwards is press the b button again to keep dashing or you're going to press the a button to jump now let's talk about snacks snacks at a baseline do not matter too too much but they rise in importance exponentially as you drop your time lower and lower this means that when you're like around 25 24 23 runs snacks are not going to be too too important to you they're not going to lose you too much time in comparison to the other things that might be costing you time but as soon as you reach the 20 minute mark or the 19 minute mark is when you're really going to be trying to pay more attention to snacks because they really really can lose you a lot of time a quick editor's note is that you need snacks in order to pay snack gates throughout the run i didn't mention this LMAO. And also an important note about snacks in this run is that if you miss a snack, just keep going. For the most part, you do not want to turn around and go back and collect snacks unless you just missed an egregious amount or you like missed a snack box or something. But 90% of the time, you don't want to turn around and like get one snack that you missed. If you just missed one snack, you'll just want to go past it. Now let's talk about version differences. This run is being done on the NTSC GameCube version of the game, which is generally the main console that you will be running this on. Quick note is that this route is playable on the Xbox versions and the PAL versions of the game, but these versions are slower for very reasons that i will not get into in this video if you have questions about those you can drop them in the discord you can drop them in the comments and i'll do my best to ask those but generally pal and xbox are slower and they're also harder than just doing it on the ntsc version of the game all right so first we're going to set up fade skip and essentially all fade skip is is just unplugging your controller and quitting the game as the fade is exiting you can do this if you want it really is optional it only saves a second so you can do it if you want at the beginning of your runs or you cannot all right, now what we're going to do first is you're going to hold down right and we're going to enter playground. Here we're basically just going to collect every snack that you see me collect here. And that's pretty much in general for the rest of the run. If you see me collect a snack, get it. Specifically on the tire swing, we're only going to collect the first one on the left side of the first row. And then we're collecting all of them. So we're only leaving one in that tire swing, but we're collecting the rest. As we enter manor, you're just going to hold upright on the control stick, and then you're going to do a trick called chandelier jump. Chandelier jump is a deceivingly simple trick. You just jump on the rail and then jump onto the chandelier. This trick is really, really tricky. It is very easy to mess up, so don't be discouraged if you miss it. Literally, I was missing it yesterday, so haha. After, we're just going to talk to Holly, get the map, and we're going to make our way to shock on the dock one. When you talk to Don Knotts up here, just be sure to release the R button as you talk to him so you skid. When you enter shock one, you're going to want to hold in between the down right notch and the down notch. And up here in shock one is going to be the first instance where I will tell you to release the R button. When you're trying to get on this roof after we collect these two snacks on the barrel and we jump up there, that jump onto the roof, you will want to release the R button. 
And as we make our way up here, you're going to notice I'm going for a cycle known as Rat Cycle, which essentially is just clearing these rats here and clearing the last one before he goes back up to the top there. As we enter shock two, you have some options here in terms of snack route. You can either jump and get those two snacks above, or you can just dash through like I do. The only difference this is really gonna make is how you're going to dash down the line by the hooks. Now, when you approach these boxes in the back, you're gonna see me execute a single jump onto the second box there and jump back to the snack box. You can also just jump on top of the whole stack if this jump is giving you problems. Now for rubber bread and skip, all you need to do is walk into that little pole or the box and then release the R button and jump up. And then you're going to take a little baby jump and then turn around and jump up to the snack box. And this is the part I was referring to about snack route. If you do the way where you jump up to the tire swing, you collect the one on the right and then go on. If you do my way, you collect both of them and then you go on. When you interfere on the pier two, you're going to want to hold right on the control stick as you spawn in and then roll down and to the left. And then we're gonna do a neat trick here where you can't jump on the tar, but we're gonna actually get on this rope, jump up and get that snack box. And then we're going to make our way and then do tar stress. Now tar stress, we're basically just going to use a metronome. We're gonna set that to 78 and we're gonna jump on the fifth beat. We're gonna start that metronome when the text appears on the loading screen. We do this so we can get a snack box above the tar. It's a two frame window to jump off of. So if you miss it, it's no big deal. This trick only saves about two seconds. So it's really only valuable at top, top level. Fishy Skip is up next, which is actually a really easy trick. All you do is rub yourself up against this pole by holding down right on the D-pad, and then you're going to wait for the crab's hand to get to the barrel, and then you're just going to hold down right on the D-pad and fall into the water, and you will simply void work. So an important note if you do miss this trick is that you have to leave and then re-enter this level. This is because the way water works, after you die in a level, you can no longer clip through the water, and the water behaves differently and will actually kill you anytime you step on the water. We don't necessarily know why this happens, we just know that it happens, so that if it does happen, we have counterplay and that is just to lead and re-enter the level. So going into Coast 1, one thing that I'm going to mention about Scooby's charge attack is that his hitbox actually shrinks to his head. So as long as you aim your head away from enemies, you can actually just slide right around them, which we're going to do around this caveman. We're also going to be used this a lot in the next level, Coast 2. And now we're going to set up for our next trick known as Fish Cringe, or at least that's what I like to call it, because this trick is pretty cringe. But uh, what you're going to do is you're actually going to dash off the edge and death abuse in order to avoid the cutscene. The reason that you're doing this is so that the keys are actually in the air. So if you don't know when you spawn into Coast 1 at first, the keys are actually in the bottom boxes, but we want the keys to be in the top boxes so that we can slide in and retrieve them. All right, and as you reach this platform, we're going to be doing the trick known as Fish Cringe or Coast Cringe, whatever you wish to call it. You're going to be collecting these four keys, one, two, three, and four. I've marked them out on this graphic. You're going to be getting them in this order because it is the fastest way to do it. You don't really need to concern yourselves with one, two, or four. One, two, and four, these are really easy to get into. They're really simple of just a manner of clipping into the boxes and clipping out of them. But three is the one that we're going to go over extensively and thoroughly because this trick is far and beyond the hardest thing you will do in this run. So for key number one, you're going to hold up left on the control stick, clip in, and then come back out of it. Key number two, you're just gonna hold up right and keep going through. You're approach the fish and you're going to aggro him and have him chase you around to this box. Now this box, you're going to want his face to be slightly past the box here because if he's too far to the right, you'll actually have a manip happen where the fish will just never approach you. As you get him to this position, you're going to want to jump in the air and on top of the other boxes in order to have the fish stop moving. Then you're going to walk to the back of the boxes while you're on top of the boxes, land on the ground and on this specific spot of the ground, that I'm showing here on this graphic, you're going to want Scooby's front paw to be right here on this plank specifically. If he's too far back or forward, you will just not get the trick. 
Then you're going to let the fish run into you and hit you, and then you're going to press the B button and bonk the fish, and then you're going to jump into the hole next to the fish, face the fish again, bonk the fish, and then you're going to hold direct up on your control stick, and you will slide into the box and ideally get the key. If you don't get the key right away, there are a couple options. You can either hold in between the up left notch and the up notch, or you can hold in between the up right notch and the up notch. But those three positions are generally the three positions that you will be able to get the key in. And if you go through all three different stick positioning with your fish, that means your fish positioning was wrong and you would either have to reset the fish and take another hit or just die and reset the level. And in my opinion, this is the hardest trick in this route. So if you're not getting it right away, don't get down on yourself. Again, you can go into the community discord or drop in the comments below if you have any further questions about this. But this is one of those tricks that you're really just going to have to get in there, get down and dirty and just really practice. And if you put in a good amount of time and a good amount of effort, you should be able to get this trick relatively consistent. And the fourth key that you're just going to run into is also a pretty easy key. You just go straight forward and then hold up left and then you'll slide into the box and you can slide back out and then enter coast two. So in Coast 2, we're going to be going for a cycle known as Zero Cycle, which is essentially just sliding past all these enemies using Scooby's Charge Attack, and then we're going to make it past this first box without getting Smash, and that is Zero Cycle. Coast 3, I'm going to actually excerpt from Coley's run just because he has a different version of the game, which is the 1.0 version, which just means that he does not have the invisible fishnet. Since my version is the 1.1, I do have the invisible fishnet. So first we're going to watch Holy do the cycle, hit that fish, become great Dane Jesus, jump across these coast boats, and then he's going to hit this fish bag here, and he's going to go all the way back, hit the pole, and then come all the way forward and jump off of it in order to make it over. Now, if you have 1.1, which is the version that I have, you will have the invisible fish net, or if you're playing on emulator, you should have the invisible fish net, in which case you can just do what I do and just jump onto the invisible fish net and jump over. And then you're going to warp back to Mr. Machine, and then we're going to go into Hedge. Now in the Hedge levels, all you're really going to want to do is just copy my movement and my jump timings as close as you can. And then at the end of Hedge 1, you're going to see there is a Werewolf at the end. Essentially, there is a cycle here that we're trying to make, and if you have good movement, you will make the cycle. And if not, the only thing you will really lose out on is just a snack. This is the snack I am referring to, and the Werewolf in question. Next, we're going to attempt a trick known as Yeet Cycle. I do not get it here, but essentially you just jump at this wall and then jump all the way up. If you get all the way up, great, but most of the time you're just going to have to jump back to the platform, as it is an inconsistent trick. When you enter Hedge 3, you're going to jump on the spider, release the R button, so then you can walk and dig up the snack box. Then we're going to do a trick known as SCS or Skull Cliff Skip where we're going to walk up to this gate in the back, hold up left on the d-pad and clip through. I personally like to jump before I do this because it makes insta-clipping easier. Alright, so at the end of misbehaving, all you're going to do is just hug the bottom side of this platform here so you do not hit a cutscene. Next up is Skull for Void Warp, and what you're going to do is you're going to dash to the snack box and you're going to immediately dash right back to where you were. You're going to double jump on the sign and then you're going to hold in between the up notch and the upper right notch in order to get into this little nook on the wall. And then once you're in the nook on the wall, you're going to roll your control stick from that position to the down right notch on your control stick and you're going to jump out of the wall and then you're going to jump up and out of bounds onto the ledge above. The second half of this trick is pretty simple. What you're going to do is once you get up onto this ledge, you're going to hold into the down left notch and then you're going to round this bend and then you're going to hold into the up left notch for a second just to get around and onto this. Then once you're on here and you're dashing again, you're going to be holding in between the down left and the left notch. Then you're going to jump up the wall and once you reach the top of the wall, you're going to dash again and this time when you dash, you're going to dash off holding up left on the control stick and when you initiate the dash that is imperative that you release the R button so that Scooby goes into the skidding animation and we want him in the skidding animation so that you can extend your coyote frames and you'll be able to double jump later on meaning that you will be able to get further out and if you get far out enough you can void orb and if you're not far out enough you will simply just hit the death plane and die you're going to see me single jump but 
because I highly, highly, highly recommend you all to just do a jump and then wait for like half a second and then jump again. Use both of your jumps. Don't just do one because one, you have to be a bit more precise with it. Two, the window is completely free and you are not at risk of losing your run. Alright, so up next we're going to do skull 3 jump. Skull 3 jump is pretty simple, you just jump on this line that I've marked here, it's the black line on the ground, and then you're going to make it up to the above platform. So at the beginning of Skull 2, before you move, what I like to do is wait for half a second before moving in the level. This is so that the fish doesn't aggro you immediately and immediately turn to you. And if you do this and wait for half a second and then move to the right and then jiggle upwards, then you should be able to make it past the fish and get this row of snacks. Also just at the end of the level, we're going to make it past the final boulder that smashes to the ground and that is called Skull 2 Boulder Cycle. So I'm just going to briefly touch on skull one jump. This jump is relatively easy, but it is possible to completely whiff the edge and just fall to your death. So if you fall to your death, don't worry. Just try again. And going into Helmet 3, we're just going to try and make a cycle known as Boulder Cycle, which is just making it past this boulder up here in this nook here. And you basically just hit that nook and then go around the boulder, and that is Boulder Cycle. So up next, I'm going to talk about pause storage, which is an optional trick. You do not have to do this considering that you can and probably will quit the game. So if you do not care about a four to six second time save on your run and you just want to take the guaranteed warp gate back, you can do that. All you're going to do is just death abuse and then jump to the warp gate that you saw at the beginning of the level and then warp back to coast three. And to skip the pause storage discussion, I'm going to put a timestamp above on the screen. So just skip forward if you don't want to listen to the pause storage discussion on how to do the trick. And you can just keep going. Now for the rest of you, I did say that this strat is risky as you can quit the game. But it's actually not as risky as you may think. We have actually made this trick a lot easier finding new tech. And we're going to go over that very briefly now. I'm going to link Cole's pause storage tutorial in the description below. If you need more information, you can just go to that tutorial. It's poggers, alright? So to do pause storage, what you will need is either... GameCube or a Wii. You just need to have a console in order to do this trick. And to execute this trick, you better hope your pullout game is strong because you literally have to pull out your controller in order to do this trick. How you do it is you just pause the game and then you hover over quit game yes and then you unplug the controller and press A at the same time. This is the part where you can reset, but if you do it correctly, you'll hear a sound kind of like this. And if you hear that sound, that means you did it correctly. And if you didn't, all that will happen is that your game will either just tell you plug back in your controller forehead or you will have quit the game because you will be in the main menu. Now once you have done this and your controller is out and you're hearing the sound, all you have to do is just hold the start button down on your controller and then plug back in your controller and then you have executed the main part of pause storage and then all you have to do is just do some menuing tricks so then all you want to do is scroll up three times on your first menu to the map and this will open up the map you don't want to scroll down to the map because right now you actually have two menus open because you have two menus open if you just scroll down once to the map from the continue you'll actually just quit the game because your other menu that you can't see right now you're on quit game no and if you scroll down you'll be on quit game yes and if you press a obviously you will quit the game so what we do here is we keep the game paused and we just scroll up three times to the map press a so then you say quit game no on your second menu and then on your first menu you hit the map and then you have the map open and now you can freely move on the map and then you also see the second menu now so now that you have the second menu and the map open what i like to do is i like to click a again and then you will now be on quit game no and then you will also have the map open from here you can just scroll up to the top row and then go all the way to the right to the mystery machine icon and then press a on the mystery machine icon and then you will have a quit game again and then you scroll over two more times and then you're going to click a on smuggles cove and then you're going to scroll all the way down to coast three and it is important that when you get to coast three you get there and then you'll notice that you will be hovering on quit game yes what you want to do is you want to scroll up once press the a button so you say quit game no and then you want to scroll back up to menu option that says map and then once you do this you will have executed the warp the reason you have to do this is that once you open up the map you have to scroll back over the map in order to warp personally i like doing this but you could technically do this earlier on this is just a method that i use to execute this specific pause storage you can also 
also do this pause storage with the unpausing way, or you can do it where you scroll over the map function earlier, but this is just the way that I like to do it personally. Snack count checkpoint going into which way you would want to be at about 10.08 or higher. 10.13 is the highest you can be. All right, now going in the which way, there is a tar monster at the beginning, which you will want to try and frame perfect. I don't hear I just jump past it because I was on a really good run and I just didn't want to go for it. But in theory, you should always go for that frame perfect. You're also going to see me go for frame perfects up ahead in Lighthouse 1 on the button at the bottom and on the button at the top. Then through here, you're just going to use similar movement to how you did in Coast 2 and you're going to climb the staircase. Quick snack check heading into Creepy One. Ideally, you want to have around 778, but if you have more than 770, you're doing a pretty good job, and the max you can have is 782. Up here we're going to skip having to use Shaggy, so we're going to jump up and get this key by holding down right, jumping into this nook, and then jumping up and hitting the key. Now once you hit the key, when you are landing to the ground, just let go of your control stick and then press the B button to do a full dash forward so that you hit the magnifying glass in the next room so you can do RBS and skip the cutscene. So after you run into this magnifying glass, you're going to jump forward twice, so you skip the cutscene and it snaps the camera back down to Scooby, and then you will jump on this ledge to the side, and you will fall very slightly and then jump up to the invisible ledge and then onwards and upwards to the top. This jump can be deceptively tricky, but as long as you're falling very slightly and you're not falling too much or too little, you should be able to get up to the top. You're going to have to feel this one out just a little bit. Next, we're going to do GGS. The first jump is the hardest part. You're going to jump up to this first ledge here. And how you're going to do that is you're going to kind of delay your first jump just slightly. And then you're going to land on the ledge. And when you land on this ledge, you're going to land on it and then let Scooby fall a little bit. And by that, I really just mean you're going to let Scooby securely land on the ledge. So when you see Scooby kind of land and then you want to jump again, but you're going to want to watch Scooby land and then jump up to the next ledge. And then once you get on the second ledge, you're simply just going to jump out and back up onto this pole. And then you're going to either make half bat cycle, first bat cycle, second bat cycle, whatever bat cycle. You're just going to jump on one of the two bats once you make it up here, depending on when you make it. As a newer player, you most likely will not be making half bat cycle very often, so as long as you're hitting at least second bat cycle, you're actually doing a fantastic job for a newer player. Obviously, getting first bat or half bat is faster, but for starting points, that's really good, and honestly, if you're just getting the trick at all, you're doing a great job. Up next, we're going to go over rail jump, which is essentially just dropping down to the floor here and picking up these two snacks on this box here, and then you're going to jump across the table, and in this room, you're just going to grab whatever snacks you need here to get up to 850 snacks. That's our goal right now, and to do rail jump, you just jump on this little node here, and then you do a full jump while holding down the R button. On your second jump, you're actually going to release the R button. You're going to jump in between this light and this platform here, and then you're going to make it up the rail. Don't worry, if you do miss this trick and you have more than one health, you can actually live by just going forward and hitting the electricity on the wall there, and then you can actually just Jesus walk across the electricity and try again. But if you do have one health, I recommend you doing the backup strat where you jump on this little spiral thing, and then you jump backwards onto these platforms, and then you go across the lab, and then get up top to the button this way. This strat is just a super super backup if you're not confident in your rail jump and you think you're going to die and you want to have your PB almost solidified, this would be the best case scenario to use this in. Before you leave this room, you're going to want to have 850 snacks, so just make sure you have that before you go into the next room and you do Lido skip. 
So leader skip, I'm actually gonna pull some footage from my old any person tutorial, and this is just because I have a controller cam in this one. So what you need to know is that there are some invisible ledges that you're gonna be jumping on. You're gonna jump out, and then you're gonna jump back, and then you're gonna jump out, and then you're gonna jump back, and these jumps are gonna be double jumps, and then you're going to run along the wall, hold into the bottom right notch, and then you're gonna roll up to the up right notch, and then jump, and then you'll land on the ledge, and then you're gonna jump up to the 850 gate and pay it. So again, you're gonna go out, back, out, and then back, and then roll up to the upright notch, jump, and then you're going to make it up. Here it is in slow motion. If you do not have 800, a note is that you have 845, you can actually dash back and get the snack box in the back here, and that will allow you to make up some of your snacks. Up here we're going to skip needing Shaggy again and you're just going to walk up to this door in the back, hold up left on the d-pad and jump through. In this room we're going to press A and skip a cutscene and then I'm going to do a trick known as smash with acid which is where you jump to this platform without using the smash attack. This is a pretty precise jump and you basically just walk off into the acid just a little bit and then you do two max range jumps to make it onto the platform but as a new player I'd highly recommend you to just do the smash onto the platform. It only saves about two-ish seconds at most so honestly just take the safe route because if you miss it you just die. Up next we're going to talk to the gang and then we're going to approach this railing, release the R button, hold upright on the d-pad and dash through. It is possible to get stuck in this wall, and if you do, I recommend just wiggling the d-pad between the up, the upright, and the right notches on your d-pad, and just keep dashing forward until you break through. And then if you don't, you can just hold down right on the d-pad and then clip out back into the room. And then you just hit both of the buttons, clear two waves of enemies, and then you're going to beat the game. Important note about this room is that every enemy that you knock down with your helmet and every button that you hit with your helmet can be frame perfected. So try to hit as many frame perfects as possible. You always go for as many as possible if you can. Then what you do, when Mastermind spawns to the ground, you just hit him into the electricity and then you are done. Also just note where Mastermind spawns is complete RNG, so sometimes you'll get one hit, two hit, three hit. It's out of your control, just react and hit him as best as you can. The good news is that this is the only point of RNG in the whole run, and that your variability will be about five to 10 seconds. And before you go, I'm dropping my splits.io file in the description below. That means you can copy and paste this link and it'll open up the splits. And then all you have to do is just delete my times and you're ready to go and ready to run. And again, just make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy. And uh, see you in the next one. Peace. Hey, it's me, Ryan in theory of twitch.tv slash Ryan in theory. And I approve.